where hinges creak and cartridge slots, and strange and frightening sounds echo from your Game Boy, where monitors flicker though the cables are secure. That is the time when coders are present, porting their games with ghoulish delight. Welcome to Port Center, the Haunted Mansion Edition. <laughs> In the late 90s, or possibly the early noughties, Disney decided to start adapting some of its theme park rides into big box office spectacles. Ignoring Tower of Terror, a made-for-TV movie which features Steve Gutenberg and Kirsten Dunst passing each other in their respective career trajectories, Disney's first efforts were, um... Well, they, they weren't great. We got The Country Bears, a family musical comedy starring Haley Joel Osment as a musical bear, and Christopher Walken as an evil banker like there's any other kind. <laughs> and the astoundingly awful Mission to Mars, loosely based on the old Disney World attraction of the same name. Oh my god, he's gonna sing. After a few duds, however, we were eventually treated to Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl, a delightful and wholly original romp about a naive but idealistic young man who assembles an unlikely crew in order to rescue the love of his life from a ship of ghost pirates led by a captain with a singular fixation. And they say there are no original ideas in Hollywood, eh? The response to Pirates of the Caribbean from both audiences and critics was overwhelmingly positive, and it seemed like Disney were on the right track even after a couple of, um false starts. Which was good for Disney, because later that same year they'd release another film based on a very popular Disneyland attraction, The Haunted Mansion. Released in November of 2003, almost a full month after Halloween, so as not to distract people from the seriousness and solemnity of the season, the film starred Eddie Murphy as pretty much the same character he's played in every movie since 1996, who does some things in a haunted mansion. Look, it's it's not very good. It's, it's a bad movie, and I won't embarrass us by going into it, but to capitalize on the ubiquity of the haunted mansion brand, a video game was put out for the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube, having bugger all to do with the film, pulling instead from, well, from Luigi's Mansion, if we're being honest, but with the general look and feel of the Disneyland attraction. In this game, you play as Zeke, a young man who comes to the mansion looking for work as a caretaker, only to find that he's instead going to be stopping an evil ghost from conquering both the afterlife and the land of the living. Which is the kind of work one hopes is worth at least time and a half. Tonally, this game is all over the place, with cartoonish ghosts juxtaposed against a broadly historical post-Civil War era setting, which is exactly the sort of depth, detail, and layering one expects from a licensed tie-in video game for kids. In terms of gameplay, The Haunted Mansion is... It's fine, it's, it's good enough, maybe not a bad way to spend a weekend if you've got nothing else to do, like say if it's raining, or your other plans have been cancelled, or if wild dogs have broken into your home and chewed up all of your good games before scampering off with the broken remnants of discs stuck in their teeth. In that very specific scenario, yes, I can heartily recommend The Haunted Mansion. However, there is a lost Haunted Mansion game, a Game Boy Advance title that was nearly finished and ready to go in 2003, but that was mysteriously shelved for reasons unknown. No, really, we don't know. There's almost nothing about it online, no articles about its cancellation, no entry on Unseen 64, no listing on Moby Games, even the Haunted Mansion wiki doesn't have an entry for it, and the Haunted Mansion wiki has an entry for every piece of tot even vaguely connected with the ride. Look, here's an entry in the wiki for Heaven, which appeared in the movie, but apparently might not be part of the ride continuity. Thanks for that, Haunted Mansion wiki. Of course, there's a ROM dump of a prototype out there on the internet, so we're going to talk about that. But before we do, I'd like to introduce you to an entire other person who's going to sit on this couch, Mac Bavay. Yes. Ugh. Jesus, I knew you were going to blip in, but not that quick. Uh, Mac Bavay is the co-creator and co-writer of the comedy drama web series Typecast, which uh, we are currently trying to crowdfund on the internet, and there is a web address around here somewhere that you can type into your into your browser, but besides that, she's also the foremost expert on The Haunted Mansion on this entire couch, and she will be appearing periodically throughout the episode to just throw facts uh, about The Haunted Mansion at your face. Are you, are you wanting me to start that now? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, let's get things right, let's get to go for a start with a, a small, a quick one. Uh, well, it's a ride at Disneyland. It's a ride at Disney, La do you, is there more to that? There is, but you said make it quick. I did. That's on me. That's you know what. That's on. It is. It's on you. Are they? 
I hope there's better facts is this whole later. Show? This is the whole show. <sighs> the game opens with a very slow moving crawl through the woods surrounding the mansion, interspersed with text explaining who you are and what you're doing there. You take control of a young woman named Yaz, whose last name I'm very sorry to say is not, in fact, Queen, who has two friends who have inexplicably gotten lost in the mansion. Your initial goal is to find and rescue your friends, and then to rescue the mansion's owner who is being held captive by the 999 super spooky ghosts who live there. Can you save everybody before the clock strikes 13? Well, no, it turns out because this game is preposterously difficult to play, mostly because it doesn't do a very good job of explaining how it works. There are trading cards for characters and locations within the mansion that you can find scattered around, and you can play against some of the NPCs you encounter, but the game never goes to any lengths to explain the rules of the game to you. I think it's top Trump's rules, but I have no way of knowing for sure. The information simply isn't there. You can also unlock ringtones to use as weapons, and specific tones are usually good for defeating a particular sort of enemy. This ringtone, for example, is effective exclusively against this ruddy great big plant thing. I guess it's not just humans who are sick to death of the crazy frog. Topical! It's possible this is the sort of game that would have required the player to make frequent use of the printed game manual to truly understand what's going on. You know, like all of the best games from days gone by. But even by 2003, when this game would have been released, that particular trend had long since fallen out of vogue in the games industry, replaced instead by tutorial levels and ease in beginnings. You know, the sort of thing people keep griping about even as printed manuals have all but vanished. Originally, the Haunted Mansion was planned as a walkthrough attraction and was soon changed when they figured out that people would rather ride a ride than walk around on their legs because people are inherently lazy. The game failing to properly explain itself is annoying enough, but it's compounded by the incredibly janky pseudo 3D used for the game's graphics. We touched on the GBA's 3D capabilities a little bit in the Doom episode we did last year, but the main takeaway is this. It ain't great. In the Haunted Mansion, the low sitting camera means you're never quite seeing as much of each room as you feel you ought to, which makes it difficult to figure out what to do next. But that's secondary to the fact that the decision to render the game using these sort of 3D graphics even a Sega Saturn developer would be gently embarrassed by means that the frame rate takes a hit, which is a bit of an embuggerance when you consider that a lot of the enemies in this game have surprisingly large hitboxes, sorry Mikey, and between the fiddly camera, the reduced frame rate and the wonky controls, maneuvering around them is, frankly, a bit of a shit show. Really, this game would have benefited from a more two-dimensional, top-down, escapist-style approach with simpler graphics that would really give a sense of where you are and what you're doing, but I suspect that the developers wanted to retain some of the grand moodiness of the ride, and that can be harder to pull off with a simpler graphics style. Though in fairness, it's apparently no less difficult to pull off in broken 3D being rendered on a teeny tiny screen which may or may not be backlit depending on when the kid got their particular model of Game Boy Advance. All in all, it's a mercy this game was never actually released. Sometimes a licensed game winds up being too simple, either because there's a rush to capitalise on a brand success or because some involved party doesn't think it's worth putting any actual effort in. But sometimes, as in the Haunted Mansion on the Game Boy Advance, a game can become too complicated, bloated under the weight of too many ideas competing for attention at once, none of them properly or sufficiently explained in-game, if at all. The actual face of Madame Leota in the Haunted Mansion is actually done by an Imagineer named Leota Toombs. However, the voice is Eleanor Audley, who was the voice of Lady Tremaine and also of Maleficent. The actual voice of Leota Toombs can be heard at the end of the ride as Little Leota, who's telling you to hurry back. Had this game come out, it might have found its way into the hands of young gamers courtesy of well-meaning parents and confused grandmothers wanting to buy something vaguely Halloween-themed for their young, but it mostly would have found itself stuffed at the bottom of a drawer alongside Scooby-Doo, Mystery Mayhem, and That's So Raven 2. Alright, yes, I'm looking at an unfinished prototype ROM, and we've no idea how much of this build would have been included in the final game, but keeping in mind that we're playing a build that by all accounts was near final, I think it's safe to say that we, and the Game Boy owning children of the early noughties, dodged a bit of a bullet. Still, it represents something of an oddity in that there's almost no information about this game anywhere online. 
This strikes me as odd, considering the game got far enough along into development to get a write-up on IGN of August of 2003, three months before the game's projected release date. They even posted video footage of the game looking not too dissimilar from the version I've been playing in this ROM dump. Oddly enough, that's almost fitting for a video game connected to the Haunted Mansion. The ride itself has a vague and baffling history. It was originally conceived as a walkthrough ride, and the format, form, and narrative changed countless times during development of the ride in the 60s, taking a huge shift following the death of Walt Disney when Imagineers couldn't decide whether to have the ride be mysterious and spooky or creepy and kooky. I'm worried that it sounds like I'm suggesting the Imagineers killed Walt Disney over uncertainty. That's not... No, it's uh, Walt Disney died, and then the uh, team kind of lost their creative uh, fo focus. Anyway, so the, the final ride is a marriage of, of, of two ideas, forming a sort of mullet experience. Scary stuff at the front, comedy ghost party at the back. So did you know that the three hitchhiking ghosts actually have names? They are Ezra, Phineas, and Gus. But a lot of the history of how the ride reached its final form is contentious, debated, and disputed, and we may never know the full story of how the development of the ride truly happened. The Game Boy Advance game is kind of similar in that we don't know anything about it. How they wound up using a completely different story from the home version of the game, how the game properly functions, how or why it was cancelled. I made an effort to seek and reach out to people who worked on the game, but people either didn't remember or had no response for me, which is baffling and brilliant and perfect for the Haunted Mansion. Nevertheless, it's a mystery I will continue to research and one day, hopefully, possibly even return to with a follow-up video. You know, assuming anybody other than me is even remotely interested. I've reached out to companies, publications, I've Googled and binged the crap out of it, but I just keep hitting dead end after dead end mm -hmm. after dead end. Is it the dead end? Is it because of the corpses and the ghosts? Yes. Okay, More cool. of that, please. Sure. It's the end of the episode now, so that's really... Oh. That's about all of the corpse puns that you, you're going to get. I, I kind of like that, though. I like that there's this air of mystery about a game that is connected to the Haunted Mansion, which is a ride with its own mysterious past and, and baffling history. There's something special about that. But I'm going to continue to research this, and hopefully, eventually, I'll have answers to these questions. But in the meantime, we're going to sign off for this week. Uh, before we go, Mac, do you want to throw another Haunted Mansion fact at us? Yeah, uh, so the voice of the ghost host, Paul Fries, who did a lot of other Disney attractions, also the voice of the Pillsbury Doughboy. The... Yeah, the... like the little guy that wants you to put baked goods from the fridge into your oven. So the, the guy who... who uh -huh. That guy yeah. is also the corpse in the... Hanging from the... Yes. There's always my way. <laughs> exactly. I dig it. <laughs> Goodbye. Ah, there you are. And just in time. There is a little matter I forgot to mention. Beware of hitchhiking ports. <laughs> They have selected you to fill our quota, and they'll haunt your game room until you return. Now I will end this episode, and a port will follow you home! <laughs> Hello, thank you very much for watching this week's Port Center. I say this week so I can put them out weekly. I very, very don't. Um, before I leave you, I wanted to tell you, or we wanted to tell you a little bit about Typecast, which is a project we are crowdfunding right now. Yeah, so if you like being human and extras, imagine mashing those up into a delightful blender and drinking that smoothie and you've got Typecast. It's funny, it's smart. We're very, very proud of it. We put a lot of work into it. Do please go to the link which should currently be appearing Maybe here, maybe down here, could be up here, wherever I've decided to put it in the edit. Do please check it out because we really want to make this project. We uh, are trying to raise quite a lot of money, but whatever we get, we will make as much of the show as possible. And monsters, practical yes. monster makeups. I'm going to be made up as a swamp monster. It won't be much of a stretch. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and share and subscribe. If you want notifications when new episodes of shows like Port Center and Movies with Mikey go out, don't forget to ring that bell. 
and I will see you next time.